Oh, hey. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I get lost. Okay. What's up, Rach? Hey, John. What are you up to? <laughs> oh, what just are you doing hanging out on the moon. <laughs> oh gosh. So it's John and Rachel. It's the Jago pa- Podcast behind the scenes. You're on Facebook Live because we planned the rain today so that you would sit in your living room, grab your snacks, and come watch this because. No pun intended, but we are over the moon to be here. I had to say it because I, I did the uh, baby from Dirty Dancing. I carried a watermelon. Remember that? Like a little routine. John doesn't because he's not a movie watcher. But when I met Sam the other night, I actually said, we are over the moon to be there. And then I was like, I just said over the moon. So you will meet all the people I just talked about on this episode. But for right now, just sit down and enjoy through Facebook Live. The way this works, you'll see all the ins and outs, all the people coming on and exiting and the fun, you know, banter back and forth because we're all nebby and you like to see all the behind the scenes and we're happy to provide it. Then you will listen to us on Tuesday. I was giving John a ch- a Oh, chance. no. I just, That's John were, over there. You were rolling, John, so. John, uh, you will get a chance to listen to us on Tuesday, the edited version, wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, we're super excited for this because if you can't tell, we are at the Moonshot Museum. It's not ready yet, people, so do not come down here. But we get to experience the the behind-the-scenes opportunity, and we are so grateful. So first up, if it doesn't get any cooler, Kirsten, yell what the name of your band is. Paging Dr. Moon. (laughs) What? What did she just say? Did you make that up just for today? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Just to get on. I love it. That was the criteria. The crazy story is, is that they messaged us through our website like two days ago. And we, and we needed a and band. We needed a replacement. band. And we're like, we're going to the Moon Museum. Please be available. I and love you guys it. Are available. So uh, in case anybody's just only watching for a little bit here, where do they find your guys' music? Uh, Paging Dr. Moon is streaming everywhere. We have an album and an EP out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, wherever. We have a website. It's just pagingdrmoon.com. She didn't Paging say Dr. Moon. W- 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 yeah. <laughs> Paging Dr. Moon. Paging Dr. Moon. <laughs> no, you're good. All right. Let's get a listen before we start the podcast. All right. This song is called Come Home. I break every promise that I make to myself I can't be held responsible for my mental health I'm breaking down again I really need a friend Once the world was shiny, everything brand new I lived inside a dream I dreamt up for myself and it came true Now it's gone and I don't know what to do I spend all my time looking for you All I have are broken promises Don't believe me cause I'm full of it All I have are broken promises All the work in the world All the times that I felt hurt Are nothing without you I'll never amount to you In my face I see hers But she's buried in the dirt And I'll never amount to you I'm nothing without you Keeping myself busy Trying to keep myself awake I keep my feelings in Until it's more than I can take And then it all explodes I wake up in the middle of the road My skin is stuck with band-aids Trying to keep the insides in But underneath the latex I am growing paper thin I'm breaking down again I really need a friend But all I have are broken promises Don't believe me cause I'm full of it All I have are broken promises All I have are broken promises Don't believe me cause I'm full of it All the work in the world, all the times that I felt hurt are nothing without you. I'll never amount to you. In my face, I see hers, 
broken promises. Okay, what a way to start the podcast, Kirsten. That was awesome. I Paging absolutely Dr. love Moon. it when the musicians walk into the podcast. They're like, oh, yeah. Hey, Very nondescript. Hey, hey. Then they're yes. banging out there. Yes. So, man, that was really awesome. So we're going to talk to you later in the podcast. But one more time, where can anybody download your music? Uh, PagingDrMoon.com. But you have to spell the word doctor. Uh, Forget it. We're whole, not doing it now. The <laughs> whole word. I know it's a lot of letters. <laughs> no, that is awesome. That was so cool. We Got it. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right. So now we're going to get ready to start the podcast. John will make his way up here, and we're super excited because this is, as I always tell you guys, Tracy does whatever John wants. So John wanted a podcast at the moon, blah, blah, blah. This was the next best thing. So we're super excited because John could not wait to get behind the scenes. I'm a space person by, like, curiosity, but he's a complete space nerd. Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's and, start. And uh, we'll have to, we should probably, well, at some point maybe we'll even pan around as we're uh, doing this here that, to call and let you see some of the stuff that's here. But All the cool things. The uh, Moonshot Museum. But this is how we start the podcast. Go. A car purchase is a big deal, and finding the dealership and rep to fulfill your car needs is crucial. Get to know the reps at Rorick through the Car Talk video series to establish the relationship that is right for you. That makes it easier to select the CRV, HRV, or pilot that may be your next purchase. Visit RorickHonda.com for all of your vehicle needs. And now we start the Ajago podcast this week from the Moonshot Museum that opens in just a few weeks. The making of. <laughs> So this is the Yajagov podcast. That's where you, when you're watching this, you'll when you're hearing it, you'll hear a bunch of people saying Yajagov, 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 and then we say, "This is John and Rachel. This is the Yajagov podcast. We would appreciate the uh, first thing you do is put this on pause and go subscribe and uh, either listen to it on Yajagov.com every Tuesday, but subscribe to the podcast feed. We would appreciate that. And if you're on iTunes, give a nice little comment. Say like they're out of this world. Rachel's a cool mom. Right. Yeah. Cole Moon Mom today. Cole Moon Mom. <laughs> anyway, on Tuesday, that is when the podcast comes out. But on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we would be remiss if we didn't remind you that we're changing things up a little bit on our blog post because we are welcoming ourselves into the new stage where nobody wants to read. So we want you to still <laughs> read, but we are actually doing a little video synopsis so that you know what to expect as far as people who park ridiculously, a little bit of road rage, things like that that we can find that the anybody, blog is all about. Any Pittsburgher, anybody that's in Embarrassing the rest of us Pittsburghers doing good things, right? right? Or Western Pennsylvanians yep. at Yins. this point. Yeah. So speaking of video, the one that kicked it off uh, this week on Monday was John playing in the OGHL. That is Old Guy Hockey League for those of you who don't know acronyms. They've been playing for 25 years. He did a really nice tribute. All of his friends have been like, you know, completely in the spotlight and of course they should be because that's a cool thing that they've been playing together for 25 years. 25 years every Sunday. We started sneaking out of the house when our kids were little to go play hockey and then be back in time to take the kids to church or Sunday school go. or whatever. And now the kids play. And another video we did was our jagging around video with our new friend. We call him <laughs> Yvonne, but everyone else knows him as Ivan. And essentially we have been celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month on Q92.9 where we are 7 through 10, Monday through Friday. And we've been talking to different folks, thanks to Melanie from the Hispanic Chamber, giving us some insight on Hispanic food and businesses and doctors. You name it, we have talked to them and we've been really enjoying that. He is the owner though, Yvonne, of Mi Empanadas in... Lawrenceville. Lawrenceville. Mm -hmm. John actually said my new name, my word, how the joke is, I love the word wampum, which is this like city near Newcastle ish. Right. Do I have that right? Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not good. Yeah, it's John's cool. new favorite word is <laughs> miapanada because they say it so much better than us. Mi Yvonne empanada. says it so well. And the folks who work there. But anyway, check out that video and definitely check out his amazing empanadas in Lawrenceville. Yeah, it's totally cool. And uh, then we posted a blog. You know, sometimes it is about parking. And uh, we all know the jokes about uh, p guys who drive big trucks. Oh boy! You know, opposite effect of that. But anyways, this guy with big truck and a big hitch took four spaces yeah. for no good reason. No good so reason. we pointed him out. And the cool thing is, this wasn't even from around Western Pennsylvania. This is from a former Yinzer who now lives out near Philadelphia, and said, "So we're." He's like, "I got to turn this into my friends over at Yajagov." That's right. Which was cool. And then he's a turner inner. Then we had a good picture of you know. I know you. Some people just don't dig the bike lanes, but they're part of life now, right? Absolutely. It's just part of life. And 
so, but there's a great picture on Friday's blog of a car that's parked on top of the, in the bike lane, but on top of the bike lane icon that's painted on the ground. And there's a sign that says bike lane, don't this block where his anger right comes above up. it. Do you see it? It's like, like anytime it can... doesn't get any easier than that. Don't yeah. park there. So. Something that is not going to be easy for us is today is our last episode with our dear friend, Colin Parrish. Colin has been with us for, I, I might cry, but I'm going to hold back a little bit just because we're on air. But uh, Colin has been with us for five years. I had the honor and privilege of working with Colin since my days at Markowitz Communications from 2017 on. And we joked and said that one day uh, we would work together again. And that one day happened and he started out as a part-timer. He went through graduate school and continued to just better and better himself and gain all kinds of great talents and great resources and we had the privilege of having him for five years you you skipped the part where when we were trying to get him we creeped on him every we day creeped. and we, we went to the cheesecake bit. factory probably gaining 15 pounds yeah, in about okay. two months we took one because we the would team. just go sit there and eat trying yeah. to convince him to come work that's a true story yeah. and it is a bittersweet thing because we feel like he's one of our own he has helped build the Ajagov podcast the Ajagov media and uh we're happy for him that he is moving on to dick sporting well, we're not happy. We're happy for if him. If he we trips said. going out of this place, it's, it's probably not me. <laughs> just saying, just saying, it was not no, my foot. No, but we wish no, him congratulations well. him. He's going on yeah. to bigger and better things for sure. So thank you, Colin, for everything. Yep. All right. Nice. So here we go. Now we start the podcast. Who are we bringing on? All right. So well, we have to bring on our host, right? Sam, come on in here. Yeah, when I tell you John was excited, this is like, that's an understatement. While Sam's coming in, and we can edit this part out of the podcast, but Colin, if you don't mind like spinning around, showing like this place is literally under construction. Very under construction. Uh, <laughs> we have to say that over and over so no one comes, hey guys, we wanted to see what's up with the museum. Not right? quite ready. <laughs> right. Not quite ready yet. So it uh, wasn't long Sam. ago that we found out this CEO of this company called Astrobotics was building a moon rover yeah. here in the north side of Pittsburgh. And we're like, what? Yeah. And of course it would be built in Pittsburgh because we have so many potholes. Like it's a perfect place to, <laughs> to test the moon That's rover, right? Point, yeah. a, and then we found out like the whole space, con space control center is going to be here when they do that. We're like, get the heck out of here. Yeah. So Pittsburgh is becoming a huge node in the space market. And then we find out, like, not only are we building space things here, we now have a museum. Yeah. And it's open well, up almost. shortly here. <laughs> right, almost. almost. Sa Sam, I'm there. I got you, bro. So, <laughs> Sam, thank you for having us here behind the scenes just before you open the Moonshot Museum right here in the north side. Absolutely. Welcome, you jag off well, to the future you. home of Moonshot Museum. Do you think wow. we can make sure we kind of beep, 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 beep uh, somehow an SOS to the aliens? So I didn't know when they know, like. when they beep, hear, beep. welcome, you jag, they know how to respond. They that, need like, to know. If anyone in Pittsburgh can do it, the, the, the people are in this building. That's what we love. That's what we love. And Sam, you're the executive director, correct? Yes. And I, thankfully for Mackenzie, so you have some museum experience. So not just, you don't just love space. You have some museum experience. Yeah. Talk a little bit about what got you here. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll be right up front right from the beginning. Um, I don't have a lot of science and technology experience in my background. My, I come from museums. Sure. I come from history museums specifically, but I have learned a whole heck of a lot in this role. So I've had the pleasure of working at the Heinz History Center here in Pittsburgh, the National Aviary, um, and have landed here now. And for the past couple of years, we've been building Pennsylvania's first space museum. Wow. Sam, That's was it a requirement so to be 12 years old? First. Because yes. I mean, <laughs> no, you're so young, but you're so poised. You're so yes. experienced. And, and, you know, we had you on the the Q92.9 radio show and just the way you talk about this place and I loved how you position it like this really it was kind of jokingly that we were teasing about you know what can we go down to Florida and steal out of the you know moon rocks and things like that but you said look when you're done with your podcast career like you can explore all the things that might be available to you and that's so you like it gives me goosebumps to think like my granddaughter will now be exposed yeah, to some career she would have never that I never knew grew up because of the museum you guys have here. Absolutely. If there's one thing I know coming from a history background, it's that we build things in Pittsburgh, right? Mm -hmm. We build bridges, we build, um, you know, incredible partnerships and we build spacecraft here too. Right. So the, the reality is your daughter can get involved in space exploration. She can be involved in the engineering side. She can be involved in the arts and humanities side. There truly is a role for everyone. And that is core to our mission here. We'll actually be the first museum in the world that's focused on career readiness for space. Mm. 
And just if we can back up for people who may not have seen the episode where we were here for Astrobotics or haven't kind of followed through with what Astrobotics has been doing, walk us through the process. So Astrobotics has been here for how long? And then how did this concept come up? While they were sort of getting their, their uh, digging their heels into the north side here, or did that come after the fact? Yeah, absolutely. So Astrobotic as a company has been around for about 15 years. Right. Um, but in the past couple of years, they have grown exponentially. So they've secured about half a billion dollars in NASA and commercial contracts. Wow. They've grown from a company of about 20 people to 200 people. Uh, and they set up what is today the largest commercial lunar logistics facility in the world here in the north side of Pittsburgh Crazy. in Manchester. Oh, My God. Yeah, and so they they build lunar rovers, they build lunar landers. They're building the first lander, American lander, to, to return to the surface of the moon since the end of the Apollo program in 1972, right here in Pittsburgh. Wow. Mission Control is right here in Pittsburgh, just about 100 feet from where we're sitting right now. Oh my God. That is just incredible, yeah. I, it's, it's, it's prideful, you know, yeah, like you said, just the fact for that sure. when and you the, think about where Pittsburgh started, you know, we always say we do this. We draw this comparison on the regular that we're lucky to be a tech space. We're lucky to be known for education. We're lucky to be a foodie town. It wasn't like that. Absolutely. You know, 30 years. And now to add this. Sorry. And no, you're fine. And uh, I was just going to follow up and say, you know, that when we were here, the actual moon landing thing was here. And we got to sit by it and touch it. We, we like, touched ah, it. Yeah, are we you did. kidding me? We touched it. And, and the, again, it's here. It's going to go somewhere and be put on a rocket. But just as a side note, there is a Yajaga podcast episode going to the to the moon on that uh, yes particular lander. in a moon thanks box to Ryan yeah. yeah yeah thanks Ryan O'Shea so for sure. so what now, can, what the go ahead, no sorry. I was I, I wanted to jump to the museum but you yeah can go the ahead. museum so how many square feet uh, what does that you know we're challenged as far what does as that understanding mean because I don't feet. know square feet. it's the footprint of the size of you know whatever and sure what we'll be here sure so we're pretty unique in a lot of ways the first way is that we are in the same building as Astrobotic and we're entirely mm -hmm. separate we're a standalone nonprofit um, but when you visit us you're visiting the headquarters of a commercial space company. Um, we've got about 3,000 square feet. So we're not talking, you know, half a million square feet. We're not mm -hmm. talking multiple stories. We're really talking about a gallery space. But what makes this gallery really unique is a wall of windows that look into the clean room where Astrobotic is actually assembling spacecraft in real time. So you as a visitor are gonna be able to come in, watch real spacecraft be built, know that what you're looking at is gonna end up on the surface of the moon in the months that follow your visit. Can I interrupt there? Yeah. So for the research to that, and, and because it's going to be the first of its kind, how did you, how did everyone kind of come up with that concept of the viewing and watching of that versus it being like hands-on sort of, you know, like other museums are laid out? Sure, sure, it'll be both. Okay. Uh, but what's, what's really interesting is this partnership between Astrobotic and the museum. Right. There aren't a lot of space companies that are saying, hey, come in and watch us do our work right. mm -hmm. and take pictures of right. it while you're at it. Right. right? Um, and so Astrobotic made a conscious decision a couple of years ago and said, you know what, we want as we build this new facility in the north side, we want our community to be a part of our work, to be involved in our work. Um, and we want to build a more diverse and inclusive space industry. Uh, and they they walked the walk by setting aside the space for us that we're building in now. Wow. And I love the fact, again, That's that, cool. you know, people that it's, it's outreach for them to get engineers 20 years from now. Right. You know, to get people educated and oh, my, maybe I should pay attention. In Absolutely. Class and trigonometry mm -hmm. and all those kind of things. Yeah, I love. Well, like he said on aspect. the radio, be a space lawyer. Yeah, you know, like, be a space lawyer, yeah, be a space designer, yeah. right? Talk about space for a living. I do not build spacecraft. You don't want me anywhere <laughs> near a spaceship. Right. Yeah. Um, but I get to talk about it for a living, and yeah. I have a background in the yeah. arts. So there really yeah. is a, are a ton of opportunities. And, yeah. you know, Pittsburghers are always looking for clot, you know? And, uh, Wait, like, did you notice that I called it astro with astrobotics? Yo, like, did, did you have the S? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The S. Yeah. Uh, yes. Was, Sheetses, you. right. Sheetses. And, and, uh, Sally Wiggins <laughs> will be here. <laughs> Why? Walmarts. And uh, no, I love the fact that, um, you know, that you people can come here and check it out and then just get exposed to the whole thing. In the meantime, it's in the city where a Port Authority bus can can bring you here. Absolutely. You know, it's within walking distance of, of you know, the, the Acrisure, almost made a mistake, Acrisure <laughs> in PNC Park. You can you can go to the casino and walk over here. So it's it's around everything, let alone real close to the CCAC, where, again, the students over there Absolutely. walk over here and be mm -hmm. challenged by it. So when I come here for an experience, will I be challenged? I know we talked a little bit about, you know, space law, and uh, are there going to be mathematical challenges? 
interactive things that go on here? Well, I promise we're not going to make you do any math while Thank you're you. here. Now I can um, visit. <laughs> so oh my when you visit, you are going to be hit with real challenges that space industry professionals face every day, right? And so we've broken those down into uh, uh, projects that range from setting up a lunar rover that explores the surface of the moon and looks for water ice, um, engineering challenges, trade-offs that you have to make as an engineer for power sources and tools on spacecraft. You're going to explore the surface of the moon and learn all about why it's so hard to find a great landing spot on the surface, or when we think into the future, find a spot for a future settlement and take into account all of the challenging aspects of, of operating on the moon. In this space, we're in the lunar habitat right now, and we're going to invite you to kind of a cosmic city council in this space. We're going to sit around this table right here. You're going to deliberate, you're going to vote, and talk about all the big issues that face us when we talk about space exploration. Who owns what? Wow. Right? Um, can companies claim things on the surface of the moon? Can countries claim things on the surface of the moon? Who's in charge if right. we set up settlements yeah. on the moon, right? Um, and so we're going to put middle schoolers and high schoolers who join us for field trips and, and challenge them to build their own lunar charter. And then you as visitors who might be here on the weekend, we're going to have you take a vote and you're going to see how your vote stacks up against those of other visitors. Oh, who wow. Come that's so here. smart. So cool. No Democrats and Republicans. They're just coming in and yeah. <laughs> yes. just come in and enjoy it and learn. No, I I think it's amazing and it's such a cool like you said coming from the experience you have two heavy hitters with the aviary and heinz history center to kind of help what is that like from a personal perspective for you to kind of come in and see it be kind of the best of all the museums that we have here <laughs> uh I, i'm not going to push back on that certainly. yeah right <laughs> um but the reality is pittsburgh is an incredible museum city right. right not many cities have a museum family like carnegie museums uh, a history center like our history center the aviary um, and we're excited just to be part of that community right mm -hmm. we are the latest entry we're going to complement the work of our friends down at Carnegie Science Center mm -hmm. in a big way they're talking um, uh, space exploration as it relates to Mars we're talking space exploration as it relates to the moon um, and it's just a it's a great community to be Crazy. stepping into um, you know and we're opening in two weeks yeah and, and I, hey water ice is not New Jersey water ice is what we're gonna find <laughs> through exploration here. yes but you know why I say that is we travel to New Jersey regularly for hockey and they're always like we have water ice and i'm like what the hell is water ice? <laughs> so, anyway i had to say it. again to legitimize it one more time yinzers are always you know if ben roethlisberger walks yeah. into some place oh that's the best place to be right well so when we were here for a press conference so he coming with astrobotic in? <laughs> is that we saw this guy talking from nasa yeah. this like red-haired yep. older gentleman mm -hmm. and we're like oh, okay he's just a guy from nasa the next yeah. four weeks <laughs> He's the guy. He is the guy from John NASA. John says this all the time. Yeah, he's the guy on yeah. Every NASA. He literally texts. He's, he's like the did NASA you administrator. Yeah. yeah, like, and he, he has that like uh, that uh, uh, Senator Bill Nelson. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah, he has that NASA voice, John and it's them. just so oh crazy. God. But it, like, so oh. Pittsburgh, like, le, Yenzer's, it's legit. It's it is legit, legit. Yeah. and and Pittsburgh is what what we're going to talk about a lot here is the fact that so much space work happens in our region. Right, right? Um, we are doing as much work as a lot of other states that are really known for space, like Florida and Alabama and Colorado, like a ton of space work happens in our region. Yeah. Um, and not enough people know about no, it. So we're going to get the word out. Seat, Colorado. We just call out states on our podcast. Now. Anyway, New Jersey, New Colorado. Jersey, Colorado. Yeah, right, we don't right. like that. We're here to start a fight, <laughs> museum fight. We're totally kidding. So tell everybody when can they you know plan on coming? Because we keep joking about the fact it's not open yet. But what can we expect? Is there somewhat of a time frame? We're not putting you on the spot. Absolutely, on the date no. And time. I've got a date and I've got a time. Okay. So please don't come yet. But right, please right. do come starting on October fifteenth. So on Saturday, October fifteenth, we've got a grand opening celebration that's starts at 9 a.m. We're going to have some very cool people here. Mayor Ganey, the county executive, Fitzgerald will be here. We're going to have a representative from NASA to help us open everything. We've got some pretty cool, I'll give you a little hint, there's a little bit of an explosion planned to no. help us help nice. us open the doors. Um, okay. So 9 a.m. October 15th, and then we'll be open five days a week from there on out. The lady wow. just didn't throw a paint roll at your head, so she must be on. She's like, <laughs> yeah, that's okay, 15th. Yeah, what you, what you can't see right now is we are actively <laughs> painting and screw driving yeah. and everything else right, right now behind yeah. the camera. And where can everybody find you online so that they know like how to get the information and things like that? Sure. So you can visit us at moonshotmuseum.org. We've got all our information about what's happening inside the museum as well as those 
events that are upcoming uh, for all of our opening activities. Sam, you are a pleasure to Man, speak yeah. with, and we appreciate yeah. your time more than you know. But you don't get off that easy because we have a coveted question of the day. Ooh. But we themed it around the fact that we are here. So if you could take anything, hold on, let me make sure I have it right. If you could send anything to the moon, what would it be? Great question. Thanks. You, uh, that's uh, that's fighting. He's words. not even a listener. He we just have a competition of how many times somebody says that. Darn. Remember oh, that okay. next it's guess. Now one zero. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent question. So, um, <laughs> double down. so I'm not from Pittsburgh. Right. Oh boy. I moved here about Bye, five Sam. years ago. Well, you yeah. know, but I've come to love it. Right. It's okay. my second hometown. Well, sure, sure. And I came here already with a deep love of Fred Rogers. Right. Okay. Mm. Um, and so I think if I could send anything to Pittsburgh. I would either go over to my friends at the History Center and beg and plead for a thread or a button from a Fred Rogers sweater, oh, wow, right? That'd one. be pretty cool. Or I would settle for, we could put, um, won't you be my neighbor on a little SD card and we could send that up to space. How do you, what do you think about that? I love That's that. Really that one actually gave me chills. goosebumps. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you're Aww. good. To think we're known Man. for that too, right? You're good. It's pretty yeah. cool. You're good. John can't even look <laughs> at you anymore, Sam. <laughs> Sam, thank you're you good. so much. We appreciate it. Thanks for it. being yeah. here, guys. <laughs> thank you for thank having you. us. We appreciate it. All right, so you're going to hear a little music. And then our next guest is a guy who's really, get ready, rad. We're getting dorkier by the minute. We can't even take it anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. I mean, we said over the moon. Come on, Thanks. James. Thanks. Thank you, Sam. You were fabulous. Wow. This is so cool. Oh, my gosh. You have to, you have to lead into that interview, James. <laughs> right. Toughy, right. No, I, I, <laughs> I first met Sam a couple of weeks ago. And to know, if, if I'd have known then that I would be competing with him for like After, bo- yeah, podcast right. guest supremacy, <laughs> I like tore out his larynx like, can't be a guest now, can you? Oh, that great. is really good. Might be the first time that's ever been said uh, on our yeah, podcast. Yeah, because I say things like that. So. <laughs> that is the voice of James Santelli <laughs> yeah. from the Rad Regional Asset District, which uh, we did a little education on Listen. our own because we didn't really know anything <laughs> about it. We didn't. And the context, these are the kind of relationships I feel like that only happen in Pittsburgh. So it goes like this. John and I do some marketing for uh, Swickley Sweetwater Center for the Arts. We knew that they were a part of Rad. We were looking into it so we could understand all of a sudden all the news breaks that all these free things are happening and so we are like okay we're going to talk about this on our Mazda Monday we talk about it on Mazda Monday Rad likes it and says thanks for the shout out and we're like wonder who that guy is or gal and so we were like let's do some digging we call the front desk here's your gal here's your guy <laughs> here's your guy gal whomever here's your person here's your person now he's going to tear your larynx and, out. Yeah. <laughs> anyway it was so cool because all seriousness, James was so helpful from the minute we called. In fact, there were phone problems that day, if you remember. And yeah, we had to call offices, and, re- yeah. and get him on the radio. And uh, just a gem and really explain things so well. So we had to have you on longer form so that we could give you some time to thank you for all Aww. that Rad is doing for the city. Because these free events are still happening, right? Up until the 16th? They right? are until okay. October 16th. And uh, we're almost a month in so far. But as I've told people, this is the biggest, baddest, radical days yet. So we're it more is. than five mm. weeks. So there's still time. So, yeah, go ahead, John. No, so, James, I'll just relay my story about Red because I didn't really know about it, but uh, it exposed me to something. So, one time, somebody said, hey, let's go to this glass center over in the Friendship area and watch them blow glass. I'm like, oh, for God's <laughs> sakes. Gag me. Like, no, I really don't want to go. Mm-hmm. We went, and I had the best time to watch, to oh, see good. that all happen. And that was a Rad night. Absolutely. because It was free because of Rad. And, I, and we have been now been back there a couple of times to podcast. It is so amazing. Like, it, if it wasn't for Rad, I would have never been exposed to that. Sure. You know? And so that's kind of how I identify Rad. I'm glad that you said that because that's kind of what it's all about is it's not just opening up the museums for free or going to the zoo right. for free, the aviary. Although, as Sam mentioned, we do have, you know, this, I think you called it museum family. I mean, that is so true. So we true, do have yeah. that. But there are more than 60 assets that are all involved with Radical Days. And we tell people, go to as many as you like. You know, here's your chance to see it for free. It's not going to cost you anything. If you if you don't like it, well, you know, you just lost a couple hours. But the fact that you got to go and see for yourself, see what they do, see the classes that they offer, and there's still time to go to the Glass Center this year because it's going to be this coming Friday, okay. October 7th. They're going to be open all day long, I believe, from 10 in the morning until like 8 at night. So they're really going to have all of their instructors there showing people, you know, getting, you know, 
getting the uh, the larynx and your lungs <laughs> into the glass blowing and yeah, showing what it's all about. We yeah. did love it. That was a great experience. Oh, it was yeah, fantastic. And things. I love the fact that you can go there and see this very, very high end art because they bring in people in residency there who really know what they're doing. Oh my gosh, all they, the they way, go on Netflix yes, and all the glass right. blowing shows. Yes. Yeah. All the way down to the adult kindergarten glasses that are crooked that people want made in class. <laughs> you know, Meanwhile, was I yours was crooked with oh, oh. oh yeah, I made a wine stopper. It was the worst wine stopper ever, yeah. <laughs> we made pumpkins, but some Somehow they made ours look yeah. nice. I'm not sure yeah. what they did. Yeah, okay. But explain a little bit, and because it is so appreciated that they can, as Pittsburghers, go to these amazing resources that we don't always go, right? And we said this to you on the radio. It's easy to live here and say, oh, I'll go to that museum later. I have time. And then life gets in the way. Sure. So explain how this even happens and how the RAD you know, formula kind of works. Yeah, absolutely. We have more than 100 assets, and they very much are assets to Allegheny County. And they're all throughout the county, and they receive money from RAD, the Regional Asset District. If you pay you know, that sales tax, that money, that 7% in Allegheny County, 1% of that is going towards us. And so from the RAD funding, about a third goes to parks and trails, about a third to libraries, and a third to all of these other organizations, museums, arts and culture organizations, stadiums, everything else. And to show their appreciation to taxpayers, they open up and they say, come on down, go see, take a tour. Go, go behind the scenes, like really embrace what we have to offer. And we're so appreciative because all of these places have wonderful people working there that put on great events that really, you know, truly open up the doors and say, come on down, see what we have to offer. And, and hopefully, you know, gain an appreciation for everything this community does, this arts and culture community. And do the museums apply to you all to be considered, Is it, you know, or do you... Yeah, you know, how's the choice How, how does that process, decision yeah. made? Yep, I'm glad you asked. Every single year... You're they, supposed to say good Yeah, question. he didn't. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Team I'm avoiding it. Oh, I'm avoiding that too. <laughs> we just got We just got through the first part of our um, annual process where they do apply. They say, okay, this is what we're doing. This is the amount of money that we got last year. This is what we're looking for this year. They go in front of our board, submit a whole application. And we actually, just the other day, uh, put out our preliminary budget for the year. So you can go to radworkshere.org, check it out, and we welcome public comment. You know, if you, if you want to say, oh, hey, like, you know, maybe this asset should be getting a little bit more money because I appreciate the work that they do. You know, go ahead, you know, leave us a message. There's also a public comment hearing later on in October. I forget the exact date, That's but I okay. assure you it's on the website. And yeah, so it's it's a whole process. And what I love about the team that I work with is, you know, I just go around and talk about RAD and, you know, publicize these places. But the other, my coworkers are really doing the work of scrutinizing these places, making sure they're living up to right. their promises and that they are worthy of taxpayer money. And we kind of call it a good housekeeping seal of approval that like, yes, mm -hmm. like they're doing the job, they're providing, you know, things that are you know worthy of being called regional assets really serving the community and they do so 365 days a year reviewing them and taking the time so when it comes to radical days we can say like not only is this a, a good thing to bring your family but this is a, a thumbs up on this organization and the work that they do year round sam's going to slide you a 50 to make sure he gets on the list for next year <laughs> i already uh, saw it happen does that matter does it matter if somebody has matching funds if they say you know mm -hmm. can i get on there and say my company is giving a hundred or you know a thousand dollars to the Moonshot Museum. Mm -hmm. Does that affect the your board's decision to maybe? Give Sam, them he just a committed a thousand dollars. Well, to it the helps. Museum. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, I didn't know about it, but <laughs> that's why I, I would tell people like Sam, like I don't make the funding decisions; right. I just push them elsewhere. But no, I'm glad that you brought yeah. that up because we do have a, a great philanthropic community of the Pittsburgh Foundation, the Heinz mm -hmm. Endowments, right. you know, on and on, where they are also kind of giving their own seal of approval, okay. and that's a factor that our board looks at and says, like, oh, you are getting great, you know, you know, funding from these other organizations or you're getting great individual donorship they are showing their approval as well and and if they're giving to say a certain project that needs capital that you know they're building on a new expansion or a new addition they can come and say hey we've already got you know a million dollars of this sealed up but we're asking now for two hundred fifty thousand dollars from rad all of that goes into play i see wow 
And what about, because it's easy to kind of say the Heinz History Center or here, but what other types of organizations, because again, it's not just museums. So can you kind of let us know of a few other places that we can expect? Absolutely. When I, when I say more than a hundred assets, yeah. it's, it runs Go the through. gamut. What's, what's number 98? <laughs> <laughs> Large and small, but, but, but truly like we're talking about, you know, down to organizations that receive $2,500 a year in right. grad funding, which is not a lot. I mean, it, it would be a drop in the bucket for the Carnegie Museums, but for a small, like, say, dance company, right. it's really important gotcha. to them. So I, I will, though, focus on the um, places that are doing Radical Days events coming up because places like Manchester Craftsman's Guild, just, just down the street from here yep. on the north side, they do a ton of great work in terms of youth and arts programs and then the uh, jazz that they put on at MCG oh, gosh, every yeah. year. So they do great work all through the year. Um, I'm going to look down at my phone you now because they, phone. there are so many more um, great events going on. So the Pittsburgh Opera. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh Opera receives money from RAD and they put on what they call a brown bag concert where you think opera, yes. you might think very like kind of forty forty high yeah. class. Yeah. No, the, the brown bag concerts are, are free to the public and not just during Radical Days but year round. And it's more kind of musical theater. It's, it's a little lighter. Just to lighter get people a taste of it fun. so you yeah, know exactly. what to expect. But yeah. with talented opera singers. Right. And I, yeah. I went down to see them a few weeks ago, their newest, what they call their rising stars. God, they are talented. Right. God, yeah. they are incredible, yeah. and we're so lucky to have them here in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, so you get the idea. Radiant Hall, Radiant Hall. If you haven't heard, um, they do great programming in terms of you know fostering the next generation of artists, giving them space to create and really design things um, that they're going to eventually put out there. Is like, here's my you know great work to put out into the world. All of this, all of this community of museums and artistic organizations and music organizations. We have choral groups and we have, you know, small community orchestras and jazz bands. All of it comes together to say Pittsburgh and Allegheny County is an awesome place mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. and to, you know, spend time, raise a family and be able to expose them to all these wonderful experiences. That's I such have a two good quick point. questions yeah. for you in that. I have two first, quick answers. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I would be probably one of those people who probably complained when there was a 7% sales tax. And, you know, like, ah, this what guy, did I know? I but the cool, while driving. But the, cool, <laughs> but the cool thing is, is that you are a great example of how it should work. Yeah. When yeah. we're taking the taxes away, we're giving something back to the community. So I, that's why I guess it wasn't really a question. You're just yeah. saying right, I'll answer sorry. it anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. answer it anyway yeah. because I had a Radical Days brochure yeah. over my girlfriend's house and one of her roommates was looking at it and kind of looked and saw all the organizations and said, you know, oh, like this is a cool thing to have tax money go to. I don't mind my tax money. Right. Going to. Mm. And I said to him, can I bring you along right? and like, yeah, you know, that, truck you around yeah. and tell everybody this? Because that's the that's the sort of thing that we're true. talking about. Yeah. Is it really people and we're, you know, transparent. Every dollar that comes in, you can see the dollars that are going out to all of the different entities that are receiving the the rad tax money. Yeah. Plus at the rate that Pittsburgh is growing culturally, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you be happy to say, Wow, I actually helped you know, so we built this place. <laughs> Thank you, right. Pittsburgh. Yeah. We built this place. And it is an economic development play as right. well. You know, every single state, every single county offers like subsidies sure. for, you know, a company to relocate or add jobs, which, you know, I'm no expert in economic development. I'm sure it does the job, but we're a kind of different economic development. Play. Right. We're saying like, you know, if you headquarter your company here, people are going to love to live in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh and Correct. in Allegheny County. Yep. And here's all the reasons why. Or here's a reason to come and visit because we sustain wonderful places like the zoo and aviary and the FIPS and the museums. It's a tourism play as well. So all of that comes into economic development. So yeah. it really is that useful, you know, both physical infrastructure, but also the social infrastructure. Right, that's right. It's yeah. social infrastructure. Yeah, and, yeah growth. Yeah, and uh, my second, you the was, second question. Yeah, <laughs> was really, you know, it was just basically, is there another, do Philadelphia, Harrisburg, and Cincinnati, do people, do? Or were we one of the first ones to kind of do this, or no? Nothing, nothing else in Pennsylvania. This kind of came about in the late 80s, early 90s, sort of fiscal problems for the city. That, that was a time when Aviary and Phipps and the Zoo were just line items on the city budget. They were completely funded by by the city and the really? city was in dire straits and they said you know most of the people who are coming to these places are coming from out of town Region, yeah. why don't we have a, a county-wide mm -hmm. sales tax um, so that's how it came about and why it's only 
here within Pennsylvania. But there are other examples elsewhere. Up in Cleveland, Cuyahoga Arts and Culture, mm. um, I believe they have a cigarette tax that helps go toward okay. their arts and culture organizations. I just saw the other day, I didn't even know this, but uh, St. Louis, they fund their zoo through a special fund of property taxes. It's, I believe, the zoo, uh, botanical gardens, uh, art museum, a couple of other places. Um, Salt Lake City, Utah, another one where they you know, have a specific tax that goes to these. Denver, Colorado, people love visiting Denver and all the great entities they have there. They do the same. So it's obviously something, you know, it's something's working. there. Yeah, because right. if no. we were the only one, it'd be like, well, why is there nobody else doing yeah, that? Right. But no, like there are other counties and cities and municipalities that say, oh no, that's, that's something that works, that helps sustain these wonderful places. Let's do the same thing. James, I could talk uh, to both of right, you for right, hours yeah. about it, this kind yeah. of stuff. I feel smart today. Right. Before we ask you the coveted question of the day, okay. where can everybody find you online so that they can learn not only about the remaining places that they can go if they haven't been? I mean, we want them to go and repeat, but yes. essentially I see it as a, a great marketing opportunity for you guys to say, if you've not been there, now's the time to go. And then it, there is a repeat in question, right? So let everybody know where they can go. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure there are places where you've, you've heard of that, but, right. Oh, where is it? Where I do forgot I go? about that. Yeah, yeah. The keywords are RadWorks here. So the Easy. website is RadWorksHere.org. We're on Twitter at RadWorksHere, Instagram at RadWorksHere, Facebook.com slash RadWorksHere. All out there for you to check out. And like you mentioned, still through October 16th. So you can go onto the calendar, um, pick it out. In some cases, we do ask that you uh, register in advance so you can kind of follow the links and, sure. and go and, uh, That's a good and have a great to have, time. Right? Oh my register gosh, we, we've had places that have been, you know, fully booked, like the Avery and the Zoo, and it, it's just goes to show how popular that they yeah. are. And of course, it's free, so right. you know, yeah. it's but it easier works. to grab more people. But people love those places, yeah. and so we love to support them. Hardest question yet what are you sending to the moon? I see because I got a preview because yeah. I was second. We should have put them in those like <laughs> chambers. List. Remember, like how you, they can't yeah, listen. Yeah, like the beauty like, pageants, yeah. right? The they they get <laughs> smart, just kind of cone <laughs> of yeah, silence. Of silence yes. <laughs> well. I know you guys were uh, named City Paper Readers, the best podcast he is in so Pittsburgh. Good. Wow. He read the script so well. Tired. <laughs> I also saw one of the other categories for City Paper Readers was who to like represent Pittsburgh to yeah. aliens, I yes, believe. Yes, yes. And I think first place was Rick Seaback. Yes. So I, I don't know if Rick wants to go to the moon himself. <laughs> it, you know, might be a little. He might. You know, He's that guy. He might. He might. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm gonna go check out. You know, the, the well, sh shops we that are, are on the moon. <laughs> but if if Rick, Rick, if you're watching this and you do not want to go to the moon yourself, we need that's to fine. Shout him out. That's let's hysterical. let's send the Kennywood memories. Okay. Yeah. Right. Let's there send the go. strip okay. show yeah. to the moon. There you go. Yes. Let's let's send that's things right. that aren't there anymore. There you go. And so people can really understand what Pittsburgh was, especially during that like period of time. Listen, I might be wearing a cool mom sweatshirt today my next one is i heart james just telling you <laughs> like he is hysterical. well unlike sam i am a born and raised oh Pittsburgh thank you so, thank you finally you know. he just threw down <laughs> against, that over the top he just threw down against sam right <laughs> he now. Really yeah, did. Yeah. we're gonna have a fight in he the party really yeah. Yeah. There no. you, <laughs> you are a pleasure and we say this to ask tracy we only say this to certain people but we'd love to have you come on quarterly to at least talk about yeah. what other things rad is doing so that we can help kind of push that word along absolutely yeah. i mean if i'm filling out a pittsburgh bingo card the fact that i got to be on you jack oh. Oh, and not photographed on the Facebook page like <laughs> triple parking oh, right. across <laughs> handicap spaces. <laughs> It's You're better to be on the podcast. <laughs> right. Yeah. Better to do that. You, you that. figured that out. James, uh, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, my gosh. That was fun. Cool. Who said that, museums aren't that fun? Is, yeah, uh, that's right. Man. Ben, Ben, ben tall order. Ben, you have some serious <laughs> shoes to <laughs> Yeah. And this is I'm the part drama. that's, yeah. I mean, you could go get your toast. Like, get <laughs> junky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ben, just kidding, I was ben. trying to find a MySpace shirt because they said, you know, I want to wear something space. Oh, yeah. I yeah. I wouldn't have anything. I would, on my space shirt, I thought, oh, that's a dumb dad joke. But I didn't it's tell not, it. So. It's not. I like them. No um, dad jokes. Well, tell dumb. them about your shirt you were going to wear. Oh, yeah, my Astrobotic shirt. But, but I wore it so much that it shrunk, <laughs> so it doesn't fit anymore. So we went with a different shirt. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So the voice you're hearing is Ben Oaks. He is our friend from 100 years, I think. And he is from Cerebral Overload. And you're going to give us sort of like a techie perspective, right? You also are fanboying this. Oh, I'm beyond fanboying. Yeah, anyway. yeah. It's kind of... Especially when she, Tracy told me that Mission Control for the landings back there. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Colin's leaving. Now Tracy's leaving us to give tours of the Space Museum. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> see you later. You jack off's done. <laughs> okay. So, Ben, your history with us is that uh, you typically came on. I might get the uh, the initials wrong, but it, it's the Consumer Electronics Show, mm -hmm. CES, yeah, right? CES. You would, CES, yeah. And uh, you would come on and tell us what cool electric toilets and what crazy things they had just shown. And <laughs> How did you pick might that? might be able to use. <laughs> and uh, so we haven't had you on because of COVID and things like that, but... Uh, now we're in like the highest level tech we could possibly get because we really are talking about like space toilets and things like yes. that. And so first impression walking around here is this thing's getting built. It, it's awesome. And just, just to know that, that something that's going to land on the moon was built here in Pittsburgh, because I love all the space documentaries, mm -hmm. watching all the uh, Apollo moon landings and everything, and now knowing that something that was built in that room right there is going to land on the moon. And they're going to drive it on the moon from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. They're like, the people who are driving are going to be sitting right here in the north side and, you know, eating cheese fries from. Well, that's Akersher. that's what John will be doing. <laughs> so what is it from a perspective of like the gadget, the tech world? Like what's what does what's kind of the buzz that you hear? Because you obviously are a fan. But what is it that like people are saying? It, not just because it's in Pittsburgh, but the fact that it's the first of its kind. Well, it, it, the big thing is it's been since the 60s that anybody has had a rover from the United States on the moon. Right. And now we have these high-tech rovers that we can drive from anywhere in the world. Right. When we were on the moon in the 60s, it wasn't really remotely operated stuff as much. It was there was somebody sitting behind a Jeep, mm -hmm. right. basically a Jeep, sure. driving it across the moon. But, I mean, they had their scientific experiments. They'd sit down on the moon for register moon quakes and whatever, but now we're going back to the moon and remotely driving this stuff like we yeah, do on it Mars. Crazy. It's yeah, frustrating to think that you go up and down 65, back and forth to your your home, and with the, the wireless, you know, my phone goes out of service, but in yeah. the meantime, we're gonna drive a rover around the moon, which is, I don't even know how far away. Yeah, we can talk to a rover on the moon, but I can't talk to police officer from a dispatch center <laughs> five miles down the road. <laughs> right, right. And uh, so the technology side. Now, tell us a little bit about Cerebro Overload. We, you know, we kind of went right into the space thing, but you guys have been around for a while in the podcast and in, in the blog. You highlight technology in cars. You highlight technology like space stuff. What what else do you guys yeah. do? Um, we do, like you said, a lot of tech stuff. We don't ne narrow ourselves down to any like one kind of tech, whether it be EVs or headphones mm -hmm. or podcasting equipment or fancy electric toilets yeah so. i know <laughs> the, that's the first thing he came up with which was kind of funny to me that that was thing, that's okay but gaming also right oh yeah we do a lot of gaming because there's there's a lot of different games that come out every day you hear about your big companies like ea sports mm -hmm. right and stuff like that but then there's also little known companies from like erie mm -hmm. that from western pennsylvania that create games it's mm -hmm. really white thorn oh, okay really? it, yeah they're a gaming company they have at least four or five games that i know of they're based out of erie pa really yeah wow how long have they been around that i'm not sure yeah but that's cool to know we yeah. would claim it just because it's still yeah, it, it's close it's enough, close enough. Oh, yeah, yeah it's yeah. been a two hour ish drive yeah. so well actually sam if you can pipe in even if you're off but i mean you can come over what is going to be behind here Right? Isn't there something gaming related? It's like a game show. We just yeah, brought yes. you on to kind of so, tell you. So right now, if, if you're not watching, right, there's we're, right. there's it's a listening. hexagon yeah. behind us that's just black. Yeah. Uh, but when we're open, that's going to be looking out onto the lunar surface. So you're going to be so. like sitting on the surface of the moon in a habitat, looking outside. You're going to see the horizon of the moon, Earthrise in the distance, astronauts <sighs> walking around. Yeah. Um, so you'll have a, a view out the window there. Isn't that cool? Ben. We're going to sleep, but we're just ben, find a corner to sleep in tonight. The reason I brought Sam on 15. was because you can add a couple controllers, and then you can make yeah. it a gaming area. Yeah, I really like that. To yeah. Yeah. It's a 100-inch yeah. TV behind that wall, oh, so wow. there's a, it's, it's quite a gaming monitor. Yeah. Wow, that is oh, so cool. Oh, my God. Anyway, so listen, here's my thought. When you are looking at this stuff, and you don't know, like, I was never a space person. I kept asking my husband, were you a space person? It's, it seems to be like every guy's dream. But to me, the fact that there are so many factors knowing that it's the first of and to see it kind of coming to fruition is like nothing I've ever mm. seen before. You have to get down here. Octo I don't want everybody lining up on October 15th, but 
Maybe you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. I want everybody waiting. We'll There's going to be a line clear down to Akershire Stadium when you yeah. come in. Prior to this, Ben, what would you say was the most technologically cool yeah. thing? Uh, the the buzz to yeah. go see or whatever, hang out in Pittsburgh or what? Well, at least for me, since it's still space related, yeah. was I believe it was three years ago. When they had all the Apollo stuff at the Heinz oh, History yeah. Center. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, my son and I both went up and spent hours in there looking okay. at everything. Would you go to the moon if you were given a shot? Oh, hey, I just almost fell off my chair and almost knocked Rachel over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I caught would you, Would you go to the moon if, 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 or would you do one of these, you know, what's his name's doing? Jeff Bezos is doing. Yeah. Would, you, would you do one now, of those? See, you're jumping ahead because yeah. that was actually going to be my selfish answer for the question oh, of the day. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was going to be my selfish, selfish answer. I, I would go in a second. Yeah. All right. So then we might as well just go to Tell the question. Tell us where. Yeah. Where does everybody find you? Because they need to know all of the coolest gadgets, all of the gaming devices, all of the things that are tech related that Rachel knows nothing about, but maybe they're a little space related. Where does everybody find you? Uh, uh, the website cerebral-overload.com, or you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at CBROVLD. Will you be lining up on October 15th? I think I have to work that day, but I guarantee oh, wow. you my you first Sam? day He's off. Like, get him out of yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. First day off, you'll be here. There can you, you give go. me a doctor's Sign excuse? Him up. Sign him up. I'll be the first one in line <laughs> if you give me Don't a doctor's excuse. Don't we have a doctor excuse. on the side? <laughs> at least a PhD. Yeah. Yeah. Call him doctor there or her doctor. Yeah. Right. So, Ben, you can go ahead and give us your question of the day answer, which is... Well, I just want to say first, it's a phenomenal question. Thank you. Oh. And since well, I'm selfish and watched all these documentaries from when... Neil Armstrong first landed on the moon to Gene Cernan being the last person on the moon. I would send myself to the moon. Uh, nice. I, that's not selfish at all. I think yeah. who wouldn't say that? Well, it, it is cool... when you got like, let's send Rick C back. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> ben yeah. from Beaver I mean, County. You got, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's send something of Fred Rogers and Rick C back. Right. And Ben. I, w- I want to go myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ben. Oh, we funny. appreciate yeah, you. It's always a pleasure that. to have you Thanks on. And we on. do Thank love you. knowing a little bit. I love knowing a little bit more about tech because, again, that's not my bailiwick, but we certainly appreciate it because you bring you make it fun you make us understand you're the guy we call whenever we have questions when it comes to tech my printer doesn't work yeah yeah (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. yeah. awesome Uh, all right come uh, you're gonna hear a little more music and then we're going to talk to the musician who's singing the song paging dr moon (laughs) paging dr moon i knew you were gonna do that come on over (laughs) i know right And by the way, if anybody has to go, you, you guys, but you can hang out too. But if not, we want to get a picture and we'll only be another yeah. couple minutes. So, you know. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Who says that, John Chamberlain? <laughs> He's hilarious. He is hilarious. Yeah. I told you I'm wearing an iHeart James. Uh, Kirsten, get it. You know, it's a lot to follow as we keep saying. It's been a great podcast. But we have to tell you when you walked in, the story behind it is we, we got the email from you and it was like, we love getting emails from musicians who say, hey, I want to come on because the musician piece to our podcast, I'm not just saying this is critical. We love showcasing musicians specifically from Pittsburgh. And the uniqueness was that the person who we had booked for weeks was double booked and things happen. Tracy had just said to us, do you have any of your solo artists, you know, who could come on and and just kind of fill in, you know, for the week? And we were both in not panic mode, but we were kind of texting all of our friends and saying like, hey, can you come on? Your email came through so serendipitously and we said, this is perfect. And you walked in so nondescript and you blew us away with your music. (laughs) I'm not kidding you. you. Thank you. I mean, that song is in my head. I absolutely love it. I know. And so, first of all, are you a Pittsburgher or or did you come here? Please say yes. Born and raised. Okay. Nice. Uh, nice. But then I left for uh, eight years and then I came back. Where did you okay. go? Uh, first, I lived in Las Vegas for two years from 2013 to 15. And then I moved to New York City and I stayed there until the pandemic. And then I was back and forth until 21. And then I officially came back. OK, okay. cool. And yeah. what took you out? Was it music? I'm sorry. I um, yeah, I've been a singer and a performer my whole life. And I went to Point Park for theater. And when I graduated Point Park, I uh, was I moved to Vegas and I got a job in a show. So stayed there for a couple years. Did you meet Celine Dion? I didn't get to okay. meet Celine Dion. That well, it was sweet. fun meeting you. But I did. Yeah, I, I can go. I did get to perform like above Britney Spears' stage. Like we were on the second floor and she was on the first floor. So I never got to see her. But we were there the same time that she was every day. And that was pretty cool. I bet. Oh, right. What yeah, is she like live? Or is it live or is it kind It of, is live, yeah. yeah. She sings live. Um she's uh 
she was kind of going through it when I saw her, but okay. she's. Uh, I think she's. I hear she's doing better these days. Uh, <laughs> that was a really nice. That was. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, if James is looking for a secondary PR person yeah, or a Sam here, you're like, yeah, I know how to smooth this thing over. Yeah. Oh, that's too funny. But how cool to actually perform in a city like that. Yeah, Las Vegas was amazing. I was in a. I was in Evil Dead the Musical at Planet Hollywood. Oh wow! <laughs> so we we had a five six nights a week sometimes. It was a late night comedy show. It was really cool. And then when that ended, I uh, just kind of felt like I performed full time on the strip. So I don't really want to stay in Vegas sure. forever. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's go move to New York. And then I quit theater and only did music. Wow. <laughs> there you, and that's the condensed version of <laughs> that's the whole yeah. Paging Doctor Moon. Yeah. I love that. And so you started the Paging Doctor Moon. Maybe? Yeah. Okay. I so I wrote music for about a decade before I started sharing it with anybody at all. So I was always performing, always singing, but always other people's words and other people's work. And then I went through a really bad breakup and I started a band. So I started playing, yeah. <laughs> I started playing my music with other people and then it developed in this way that was so awesome. And um, I changed the name in 2020 to Paging Dr. Moon and the band just kind of comes with me. Right now I have full-time members that all live here and we all are gigging together here, but there were other iterations of the band before this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, in 90 million years ago, it wasn't that Steely Dan's deal. It was two guys and they would just hire. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Steely Dan is yeah, so cool. yeah, 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 right, yeah. right. Do you uh, play any other instruments that you've picked up along the way or? I play piano too. Okay. okay. Mm, do you wow. write the songs or do you uh, I cohort? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I write the songs. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah. is it you that, or, or the people that are in the band now? Do you co-write with them or do you co-write with other people like online and then bring the songs to the band? And how does that work? Generally, I write all my songs sitting on my bed, almost crying, and then I bring them to oh the band, God, and then <laughs> and then oh I bring gosh. them to the band, and they write their own parts. So okay. I write the form of the song, and then right. together that's we dinner at my shape house. Them I into cry a... on my bed, and then I go downstairs. <laughs> no, I'm just being dramatic. <laughs> no, I'm totally I'm just kidding. kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But a lot of my songs come from this. Uh, I call it catharsis through music. Is yeah, what I do. Right, so right. all my songs come from this very deep space. In myself, and then the band members are. You have to drink. She used the word space. Space, yeah, yeah. right. No. <laughs> um, and then the band members are tasked with the world of the song. Okay. So I create the the heart of the song, and then they bring it to life. Wow, you know, John asks cool. this question a lot, and it does make sense because everybody has a different process. But so you sort of answered that in how the process of writing is. But is that the more common way of kind of producing songs? Is that there's one person sort of working, or is there, or do you know if there's more of a collaborative? Is that something you learn? Oh, totally. It, there's so many different ways. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I've that's learned. That's just what worked for you. Yeah, that's just what worked for me. And for my two albums. So I have an album that I put out in 2021 and I have uh, an EP that I put out this year in August. And both of those were made in collaboration with a producer who lives in upstate New York, who's a really good friend of mine. So I would bring my musicians that I was working with up to his house and we would basically just hole up in the cabin and he would um, more artfully decide what all of the parts were. So it was kind of a the brainchild of both like my work and his work with the instrumentalist so it's a big group of people sure. that always work on it and typically songwriters i mean on a on a pop song there's going to be like 50 songwriters listed on there because Amazing. they're all mm -hmm. collaborating together and you could even contribute the smallest amount of work to it but it still counts as part of the part of the process yeah mm -hmm. so it really just depends on sure. on the artists themselves and yeah. how they want to go but about it's it. so interesting from you know outside looking in to see how yeah. it all kind of you know, comes together. Totally. You know? Yeah. yeah, we're, we're uh, workshopping my next album right now. So I mm -hmm. kind of threw 13 songs at these guys and was like, here we go. We're gonna get, That's we're going back number. into album mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That well, is awesome. and I'll ask you one of my other standard questions because first of all, you're, not everybody's voice is an instrument, you, but your voice is truly an instrument as we heard the song. Thank as you, you. You know, how quickly you, yeah, you for sure. uh, enunciate and such, but what's one instrument that always makes a difference in a song? You, that you would so add it. Add would, into it? You would you'd say, well, this song is this, but it I needs, know if I add 
this mm. like what's like almost like it's a what's your favorite instrument to add to a song and never be without one this is impossible to answer because i don't think that every song would be served the same by a singular uh, okay. instrument i think it depends He's on the song itself but <laughs> but i love i mean i love a horn section i love a you know, horn all right there you go that's my answer i love yeah, a horn section answer. but yeah. i do think that a drum a, a band is only as good as their drummer or yeah. a song is only as good okay. as the drummer okay. i think the drummer is the most important piece and after that would be the bass player okay. in my okay. opinion I, right. the rhythm section to me is like <laughs> everything for sure i say add a harp Oh, a harp every, is a Every nice. band needs yeah. a pernil pernil guy. Yeah. Yeah. He just likes the, the bass player. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. He needed but, uh, a way to throw that so, in. Well, so, well, so before fantastic. we ask you the question of the day, where does everybody go to download your music? Paging Dr. Moon. Um, <laughs> we are everywhere. So it's on uh, Spotify and iTunes and YouTube. I think we're on like Tidal. It's literally every single streaming platform that there is. If you just search Paging Dr. Moon, you'll find us. But you need paging and you need to spell out doctor. Doctor, yeah. yeah. Because if you just put like Dr. Moon, it's a podiatrist in California, and that's not me. I'm, I'm <laughs> so you won't find us at all. <laughs> I love that. I would I be grossed that. out at that point because it's about. John would be I'm done. Like, ah, yeah, right. yeah, that is hysterical. All right, you heard the question of the day. You were not in some like capsule where you didn't listen to it. So what would you be sending to the moon? Is it Pittsburgh specific or me specific? Because if you know what you podcast mean. you're on, you need it to be Pittsburgh. Yeah, but that's, that's okay. Uh, that's that's what personal. I thought. I'm I was Kirsten, like, well, no, that's what I thought. I was like, as far as Pittsburgh goes, uh, in everywhere that I've gone, people are the most enamored with and the most entertained by our accent. So I think that right. uh, some sort of a audio clip of like Myron Cope or something. Oh, like that's that. a good one too. Right. Um, that is a good I one. I think that would be. What would yours be though? So, um, I'm, look, I like her so much. I'm giving her. Yeah, her too. She, she I never, don't usually she do she that. She's so mad when people break the rules, honestly, <laughs> but do. she's giving you. Oh, so I take do. this and run with it. I mean, I would also send myself. That's the common word, right? That's my same. Yeah, that, that's the same yeah, answer. I would send myself. Samesies. They'd be like, oh, this little kid wants to go. It's his dream. I'm like, mm-mm, John's going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll push that kid out of the way, right? Yeah, oh my yeah. gosh, she says that. Kirsten, you are such a dream. Are I you willing you to so sing much. another song for us before we head out of here? Sure. All right, cool. All right, we'll do our thank well, yous. Yeah, and you we'll can do get our ready. thank yous if you want totally. to do stuff. All right, so wow. John, top five. I'm not just saying that. Oh That's my, my top God. Five. Like, and here's why it's so uh, special to me because I keep saying, and I don't mean this, this is a compliment. I always thought, like, yeah, space, cool. And then, you know, again, happy to support my partner who was so excited to come but it is so overwhelming to just listen to sam talk about just what to expect and again the pride that we feel that it's in our city just is astounding yeah super cool like i'm one of those people that was supposed to get an education and move to charlotte or florida you know what i mean because yeah, there was right. nothing exactly. here in pittsburgh yeah, right that's right i'm so glad i stayed and then i turn around and people like james and sam and and here and and you're like wow like pittsburgh really is so cool with all these yeah. young people that want to be here doing this stuff so yeah. thank you to sam for organizing tracy for organizing this uh this this has been fantastic is it everything sure you hoped it would be John? oh man i'll oh, tell you God. when i become the space lawyer some people call me a space lawyer. Wow, wow. You didn't do your brown brown. No, thank you so much to our guests. We had such a good time with Sam. We actually love James. He's coming on quarterly from now on. And we it wouldn't be a podcast if we didn't have Cerebral Overload. Ben Oaks is always a dear supporter and he has such good insight on the tech world and we're happy to have him as well. And now we have a new favorite band yeah, of one right. person. Paging Dr. Moon. Paging Dr. And Moon. we have to thank, of course, Honda, our sponsor. And, oh, that was thanks right though there. to Colin and we wish him the best and thanks to Monica for making this yeah. happen because she is magical as well she makes us sound really good yeah she makes me sound skinny on the oh my thing. god that's his new line <laughs> that's his new line all right so Honda a car purchase is a big deal in finding the dealership and rep to fulfill your car needs is crucial get to know the reps at Rorick through the car talk videos to establish a relationship that is right for you that makes it easier to select the CRV, HRV, or the pilot that may be your next purchase. So, as always, visit roraconda.com for all of your vehicle needs. And now we get to listen to Paging Dr. Moon yet again. <laughs> all right. Uh, whatever is good for you. Sure. Cool. Okay, this song is called Forget. I don't feel your chill when the wind blows anymore Maybe I'll forget your face 
Maybe I'll forget a thousand of the ways you buried me. Maybe it's time. A circle never ends. Maybe I've been wrong. Been stuck believing things can never change. I can't control the colors, they stay the same. But if I can learn to become whole, I might live today. I've bent and I have broken, now I'm building. You are passing through me. But somehow I don't feel empty I never thought I'd see the day But home has become an unfamiliar place Keep moving, the hard part is done I'm only looking back to see how far I've come You're chill anymore. I forgot the size of your nose. I thought you'd be with me forever. Funny that's the way. So good. So I go. was about to do like air drums. This is our Saturday. What's yours like? Ah. Yeah. Have a good rest of the weekend. Thanks for listening in. That was amazing. Thank you. Wow.